Good morning, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing. As we have a dry line set up today, dry line warm front intersection type setup today in Kansas. It looks like there's going to be high based hail producing supercells early in the life cycle. And that could be from southeastern Colorado all the way through the Dodge City area. And those supercells are then going to move off to the northeast into that deeper moisture. And tonight, near and just after sunset. That's when there could be an isolated tornado or two central Kansas all the way up into southeastern Nebraska as that warm front lifts all the way up to nearly the I-80 corridor. And uh, I'm going live this morning just to do a quick update on this forecast as I just woke up drinking the coffee here. And uh, this is the latest Storm Prediction Center outlook these are the tornado probabilities there you can see the five percent tornado probability there and big hail we're going to see massive hail up to the size of baseballs uh, these storms could develop as early as about 22 z so about 5 p.m and you can see those uh, probabilities along the dry line there there could even be some isolated supercell development along the dry line all the way through western oklahoma but that slight risk area uh, is mainly across central and northeastern Kansas, maybe even into southeastern Nebraska. And then tomorrow the threat shifts off to the east, and I'm definitely going to be chasing this as well. Uh, just my quick glance of the models, I really like southwestern Arkansas, uh, probably even down near the Louisiana border, Shreveport, southwestern Arkansas there. And so I'm going to be chasing this setup on my way back uh, to uh, rendezvous with Gizmo in upstate South Carolina. My mom has been taking incredible care of Gizmo uh, ever since this storm chasing grind began around April 22nd, and we are still on the road. I was able to get my laundry done yesterday, which is a good sign, good for hygiene. And you can see these tornado probabilities tomorrow extend all the way down near the DFW area, just to the east of there, that 5%. Little Rock as well included, uh, eastern Arkansas, all the way up to the Missouri Boot Heel, western Kentucky. Not as much of a threat of hail tomorrow, however, and uh, that is uh, because of the more marginal instability. Uh, really that hail growth zone between about minus 15 and minus 30 degrees Celsius uh, within that sounding. You want this, uh, the strongest instability to be uh, co-located with that layer and also for that layer to be relatively strongly sheared. So here is the jet streak uh, around the south side of this uh, trough. Uh, the main core of the trough is actually up near Montana, uh, but here you can see the jet streak ripping around uh, the south side of it. This is at about 22Z, and this is what's going to initiate those storms, likely initially into southwestern Kansas, maybe near the Dodge City area by about 22Z. You usually want to watch the left exit region of these jet streaks in the mid-levels here. You have lift at the left exit, also the right entrance region of that jet and so really where that the nose of that jet is punching you want to look just to the left of that and that's usually where the greatest lift is associated and that's going to be co-located with that dry line punch uh, there's going to be a dry line from western oklahoma southwestern kansas surface low is going to move from western kansas up to northern kansas eventually up into southern nebraska as well and then that warm front's going to lift up into southeastern nebraska <clears throat> So here is the low-level jet, and it is quite robust, even by 22Z. We've got 40 knots here uh, at 850. So that's a pretty strong low-level jet uh, that we're working with with this system on the HRRR. My allergies are uh, pretty bad uh, waking up this morning, so I know the low-level jet has been cranking all night, transporting that pollen northward. And uh, here is the core of that low-level jet at 22Z, and it's only going to increase as we get near um, sunset and immediately after sunset, increasing above 45 knots. And the nose of that low-level jet is going to be pretty close to the warm front by 0Z. So by 0Z, according to the HRRR, that warm front is uh, pretty close to I-70 and very easily could lift up into southeastern Nebraska as well. You can see that northeastward extension of that 850 low. So you're probably going to verify that low-level jet even a little bit further north into southeastern Nebraska. I'm not even looking at dew points yet uh, here on the HRRR. I'm looking at just the shape and evolution of that low-level jet, which is ever so important for uh, the low-level shear. And look at here at 1Z. Look at this low-level jet just blow up out there. You can see all those reds developing. 
probably just feeding into supercell storms ongoing in central Kansas here. 50 knot low level jet by 1Z, 8 p.m., still daylight. So, and that, those supercells will extend all the way into southeastern Nebraska. And you're also going to be increasing a southeasterly low level jet up there above 30 to 40 knots. So, I think there could even be a tornado threat up even up to the I 80 corridor by this evening. And here's by 2Z. Accelerating up above 50 knots, that uh, 850 low consolidates there over northern Kansas over the I-70 corridor. It's possible we still could have storms, even surface-based storms ongoing with strong mesocyclones able to drill through uh, that shallow stable layer. And yes, the uh, HRRR, this is the 6Z one, so we can probably look a little bit even closer as the 12Z is coming in. And it does, even at 2Z, the HRRR has a couple of supercells up near Salina area ongoing. Uh, it does have some pr pretty good convection even into southeastern Nebraska there. But it's very possible that these uh, supercells on the tail end still could be surface based even at 8 p.m. These storms here. Could even be some high base severe weather back into southeastern Colorado. That's at 1Z. And this is at 0Z. This is the storm everybody's going to be on here. Central Kansas, probably near the Great Bend area, maybe a little bit further north of that at 7 p.m. Yeah, the allergies are uh, just started, but they get better as I wake up in the morning. Just kind of starts off this way. So here you can see these uh, supercells across western Kansas. Uh, this is at 23Z, and they initiated about 22Z, 5 p.m., just to the north of Dodge City, uh, probably near the Jetmore area, Scott City, up there, western Kansas. And eventually these are going to be closing in on the I-70 corridor by about 6 p.m. There you can see a mature, even the HRRR resolving a supercell split there. And... Uh, this is the southern storm that we're going to be on here. And at 0Z, uh, the HRRR has about 58, 59, 60 dew points up there. But I think they are going to verify a little bit higher than this as well. Uh, the NAM wharf models are showing about 3 to 4 degrees higher uh, in uh, dew point here according to the HRRR. And often when you get this late arriving moisture like this, the HRRR will overmix those dew points and so it's actually showing lower dew points than are really going to verify but then as you go just after sunset you can see the moisture start to increase you can at least look at those trends maybe a hint of some pooling moisture along the warm front up there by 1 to 2 Z up near the Kansas Nebraska border so the HRRR certainly shows northern Kansas central to northern Kansas being the target and it's going to be late with those storms initiating at about 5 p.m likely along this dry line is very high based supercells initially uh, very large hail as well that jet streak punching off to the south look at these dew points dropping into the teens single digits across the texas panhandle cold front surging off to the south surface low right at that triple point lifting off to the northeast with the dry line extending to the south of it there you can see the northerly is a 990 surface low too by 7 p.m. Look at this banana shaped surface low here across southwest Kansas into central Kansas there. Warm front lifting all the way up to just shy of the I-80 corridor though by 0Z. Definitely is intriguing to maybe even play that warm front as it lifts off into southeastern Nebraska there. And here are the capes uh, forecast to be about 1800 to 2000 surface base capes by 0Z surface base instability all the way up into southern Nebraska by 0Z. We'll likely be playing this zone just ahead of these surf, uh, supercells near the triple point. Uh, the surface low is a little bit to the southwest and you get that warm front lifting way to the north. Kind of a uh, diffuse triple point here, not, not as sharp as it could be with that warm front just a little bit further south, but there you can see that warm front lifting into southeastern Nebraska. We'll likely play the nose of the low-level jet down here into central northern Kansas. Looks quite favorable. And that low-level jet ramps up big time just after sunset. A 
look at some of the um, forecast soundings just ahead of that surface low and still not much of a cap even by zero Z but that's going to be the issue is this capping inversion uh, of course the uh, HRRR is under forecasting moisture just a bit you look at the uh, three kilometer NAM but moisture is definitely a concern today um, but the NAM models uh, you can see are about three to four degrees higher and the NAM does hint at some pooling along that warm front lifting north up toward I-70 uh, even approaching the Kansas Nebraska border by 0Z lifting up further north by 8 p.m. maybe uh, into the York areas down toward Hebron but if you um, want to see a tornado threat materialize this evening then the NAM and the wharf models are your model of choice because they definitely have greater dew points out there a little deeper moisture especially just after dark so at about 8 p.m. you're gonna see these dew points spike into the mid mid uh, 60s there 65 decent pooled moisture along that warm front and saturated all the way up it's probably a contaminated sounding up there central Kansas decent hodographs and a breached cap with those three to four degrees uh, and higher dew points I was looking at the surface map too and there is some deeper moisture down there already you can monitor the moisture return in Texas you got 70 dew points down near San Antonio 72 71 over South Texas uh, here in Oklahoma we've got upper 50s near 60 right now but uh, really the mid to upper 60s dew point central southern Texas off to the south uh, but that moisture surge is coming rapidly almost like a surging density current from south to north and that eventually is going to arrive here in Oklahoma wrap into that triple point mid 60s dew points by probably about 6 to 7 p.m. definitely by 8 p.m. this evening as those supercells evolve into central Kansas Uh, there you can see that deeper moisture down in southern Texas even some low 70s dew points there right along the coastline and the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico has tapped out and closed for business but the western Gulf of Mexico does uh, have some good dew points 70s dew points into the western Gulf and that's what's going to be feeding this system today And then tomorrow, I do like southern Arkansas, but that's subject to change. Uh, there's going to be a lot of mesoscale influence tomorrow, complex of, complexes of storms that evolve, and I'm just going to have to watch how that plays out through this evening. But here you can see this Lee cyclone, cyclogenesis over eastern Colorado later on this morning, and that surface low is going to push off to the east towards central Kansas and deepen to about 990 millibars so it's a pretty deep cyclone here uh, if this system had more moisture we'd be pro probably talking about an outbreak of storms and we do have uh, the world champion drone racer with us today captain Vanover uh, we're gonna have the uh, Mike Scantlin and Connor uh, behind as well and so I am excited about that uh, definitely excited uh, to try to fly these drones around tornadoes more just to work on the logistics of that of flying FPV drones around a tornado but really the goal would be to approach the tornado at high speed and then go right up the corner flow maybe right down uh, eventually deploy parachutes and then turn the drone into a Lagrangian drifter uh, that's able to sample data very similar to what the rocket probe sampled so this is what we're going to target this banana shaped surface low but the nose of that banana shaped low as it punches into central Kansas co-located with that jet streak at 500 in the mid levels of the atmosphere here you can see that textbook jet streak here well separated from the core of the trough that's up near the Canadian border into central Montana and then this jet streak wrapping around the backside of the system is going to be tomorrow's setup on Sunday across Arkansas off to the east 
and I'm going to be chasing that as well. Marathon live stream. Do need to clean out my car this morning as well. So here you can see the moisture return. If we had another day of moisture return here uh, for this system, then we'd probably be talking about a pretty substantial outbreak. But I also think that the HRRR is way overdoing mixing on the northern edge of this moisture return up here into Kansas. That's why it's got those near 60 dew points. But I think that the three kilometer NAM, the NAM model, this is a more realistic depiction, uh, especially with that very robust low level jet. Uh, the positioning of those 70 dew points already over central southern Texas, even though it is just the morning of the event. So this is new moisture. But it seems like every storm this year has been producing a tornado uh, during 2021. So I think that as these supercells evolve off that bulge in the vicinity of the triple point and move into this deeper moisture where you've got mid 60s dew points, I do think that there is a, uh, a threat of a tornado or two. Right at the nose of that low level jet. You could also argue playing the warm front up into near the Nebraska Kansas border. But there does seem to be a little bit of some decoupling of the nose of that low-level jet and that actual uh, physical warm front, even though it is more backed up there along that border. There are likely going to be high base storms, though, initially when they fire. Then they'll move into that deeper moisture, and there is definitely a chance that they start producing tornadoes. It's a 50-knot low-level jet by 8 p.m., so look at that photograph elongate there that's why the low level jet is so crucial toward tornado genesis because you get these really long shear vectors in the zero to one kilometer layer your storm motion uh, here near 90 degrees uh, the only net limiting factor here would be this capping inversion the red line see how it warms up right there at about a kilometer or two up above the ground below that you've got decent moisture so really, can these parcels that originate at the surface be enough to break through this? With a strong mesocyclone, they can dynamically pipe through that uh, capping inversion there and actually drill through it like a, like a drill. Uh, drill right through that capping inversion and then access that deeper moisture and better instability at the surface. But also, when you get the development of these uh, strong caps, it's often associated with a strong low-level jet as well. So there is usually a narrow window during the evening when the low level jet ramps up when you still have enough instability and you still have a strong mesocyclone able to drill through that cap when you can still get a tornado threat. And then uh, tomorrow, we're gonna be uh, working the tail end of this low level jet core of it launches up toward the Ohio River Valley and there is kind of a 30 knot low level jet here the tail end of it kind of the consolation prize for low level shear here as this the main core of the 850 system lifts up toward the southeastern Great Lakes in the Ohio River Valley there is going to be kind of an area of decent shear maybe extending all the way down toward the Arklatex and even East Texas where with a nice east southeasterly right mover especially i think you could squeeze out quite a bit of storm relative helicity out of that environment so that does look like a uh, target for me tomorrow maybe the arklatex maybe down toward the shreveport area southern arkansas but there is definitely some decent shear here on the tail end of that system and we can certainly see the best co-location of instability using the uh, energy helicity index you can see where the best low level shear is and the best kinematics overall near the Ohio River Valley uh, kind of run out of the instability up there uh, but then you see the, the core of the instability axis into southern Arkansas down back toward uh, Shreveport area to East Texas and that is co-located with that weakening and uh, veering but still lagging low-level jet there above 30 knots elevated mix layer kind of high up uh, on the tail end of that system. Weird photographs between the two, three, and four kilometer layer. They could easily argue targeting central Arkansas back toward uh, the Arklatex there. Maybe even into northern Mississippi, up toward western Tennessee. Western Kentucky could also look quite interesting tomorrow.
It's May. A lot of the, time, the models haven't been very good this year either in the middle and the long range. But then you can see kind of the dominance of this anti-cyclone over the Gulf. Uh, kind of taking the en energy out of this next system coming in. So it looks like there's going to be about 10 days off for severe weather season. I could see this system leading to some severe weather still when it ejects. Because it is uh, closing in on peak season here. But I think that the uh, severe weather season is then going to reinvigorate by about May 22nd, May 23rd, through the end of May and uh, into June, I think is going to be quite active, looking at the long range. So that's our target area today. Uh, we're going to be leaving here at about 10 a.m. with the drone racing team. I also do have a guest with me today that I wish I could tell you guys about, but it is a pretty exciting day. For that as well um, thank you everybody for tuning in uh, to this weather report this morning I'm gonna continue getting ready for this chase I got to clean out dominator 4 and get ready for these two days of storm chasing ahead thank you for tuning in again to this weather report never stop chasing I'll be live later on this afternoon and evening. <laughs>